I'm Dr. Portland Jones and I'm here at the Pony Club Australia's At Home series and I'm here with Claire Wheatley who's a vet nurse. Claire's been around horses all her life. She went to Kilmore Pony Club in Victoria for 19 years and she's since taught at a number of pony clubs all throughout central Victoria. She completed her Diploma of Horse Business Management at Marcus Oldham in Geelong. Following this, she spent a year grooming for a professional event rider, Emily Anker, who was based at the Wandon Riding Academy. Claire is now the head vet nurse at the Bendigo Equine Hospital, where she's been for the last nine years. During this time, she's gained qualification to become a registered and accredited vet nurse with a diploma in veterinary surgical nursing. Hi, Claire, and welcome to Pony Club's At Home series. So, Claire, can you tell us how you landed your current role? Yeah, sure. So nine years ago, uh, we received a letter from our vet uh, that we were currently using saying that he was building a brand new state-of-the-art uh, equine hospital. Uh, so pretty much the next step to that, I sent them my letter. I was working in medical reception at the time, but was looking to get back into uh, the equine industry. Um, I had the background in horses, as you said, done some grooming, grown up around horses and, and have the medical reception background. So uh, basically, yeah, the next day sent them uh, my resume. They called me in for an interview. I didn't speak to anyone else. Uh, fortunately, I'd done my year 10 work experience with that clinic. So they already knew me and yeah, basically was hired on the spot. So very lucky to get into it that quickly. And, and that was nine years, was that nine years ago? Yeah, nine years ago. Wow. So how does an aspiring vet nurse get a foot in the door? Yeah, I really think work experience is key. So whether you're a year 10, year 11, year 12, TAFE student, I think you can't sort of uh, underestimate how important work experience is. Most hospitals require you to um, have uh, be a student uh, in order to be covered by insurance and unfortunately a lot of vet nursing courses actually like you to have placement or some sort of paid work at a clinic uh, so it can be a little bit tricky but if you uh, can't sort of get into a vet nursing course and you're no longer a high school student you can look at doing something like animal studies um, there's certificate twos and threes that can help you secure some clinical placement and you know give you a bit of a track into vet nursing uh, if you're not a clinic, I think you should just uh, make yourself known to the clinics, you know, be a bit proactive. Um, but over the last nine years, I've employed uh, six people that have done work experience with me into different roles. So some into vet nursing roles, some into stable attendant roles, and then some of those girls have actually gone on to do some vet nursing for oh, in. Um Obviously, during your day, you would have to deal with people that are very upset or uh, frightened and emotional um, because their animals are in pain or they're suffering or um, they might have to have surgery. How, how do you manage that part of your day? Yeah. So yeah, definitely something that you have to get used to and learn to deal with can be quite tricky at the start, um, particularly for younger nurses. Um, you know, they come in, they're worried, they're stressed, their horses are like their babies. So I think that it's important that you remain calm um, and that you can sort of put them at ease and make them feel comfortable. Um, you know, there's a number of reasons for that. If they're upset, you know, they can't answer your questions. So if you can keep them calm, they can answer your questions, they can answer the vet's questions. And most importantly, they're not upsetting their horse. So if they're really upset, we try and keep them away from the horse to make the horse easier to deal with. But um, I think remaining calm is a key. Uh, even with the angry ones, um, you know, it's important that you remain calm, you don't get defensive you know, just try and stay relaxed. You can always talk through a difficult situation with your manager later, but in front of the client, just try and stay professional and keep it together, you know, however hard that is. Um, I think it's important that you don't make them feel embarrassed no matter how they're behaving. So, you know, sometimes the crying can be difficult or, you know, don't judge them for the choices they're making. Just let them feel at ease. Um, I think you should, you know, watch your body language, keep it open, don't be intimidating because a lot of people are intimidated just being in a hospital environment and I think it's important that we don't add to that. So 
um, I think, you know, no matter the situation, just try and be professional. Um, it puts people at ease and lets them know that their horses are in good hands. And I think it's important that you, uh, you know, the horse handling, I think, is a big key. If, if they see that you're handling their horse well, um, you know, they're kind of more at ease that you know what you're doing. So how do you leave that in the surgery when you go home? Is it difficult to walk away from that? Uh, no, I, I'm more accustomed to it now. Um, early days, I think, you know, the difficult situations I would probably dwell on a little bit much, but I have learned um, over the years sort of how to deal with it, how to process it, how to sort of move on, what to take personally, what not to take personally. You know, I, I think it's all just experience and exposure to different people and just learning how to deal with the tr tricky situations. So I suppose that's, um, it's, I suppose doing that is a habit that you've got into that is, helps you sort of c cope with yeah. your, what could be a very stressful career. Yeah, yeah, I think um, there's a lot of habits that you need to develop to get through your day, um, you know, and I think so probably the biggest habit that I have is attention to detail. So probably pick that one up uh, when I was a professional groom. You just don't get away with anything when you're grooming. You've got to be on top of everything. And I think if you can learn attention to detail um, in any aspect of your life, it can easily transfer into other areas, so your professional life. I think uh, not being afraid of hard work when you're vet nurse you're going to work very hard all day every day um, I come from a family of hard workers so it kind of rubs off which is lucky um, I have a keen interest in learning self-development professional development which I've always had um, which has really uh, done served me well in my current career um, you know working in teams always something I've done um, you know and I think a big one uh, for vet nurses is the ability to think on your feet um, and I think growing up around horses really helped me with that because let's face it, things don't always go according to plan, particularly when you're competing, you know, you might forget a dressage move or not turn as tight in a jump off as you wanted to. And you have to be able to just kind of reassess, like let that go, just move on, deal with what's in front of you at the time. And I think if you're able to do that, um, it sort of holds you in good stead for nursing because there's a lot of things that, you know, change like as you're going and you just have to be able to think on your feet so there, there's just so many skills I think that you know I've learned through horses that have transferred into my professional life that you know make it a lot easier for me to get through the day. Now you mentioned working in a team and I'm interested in this because a lot of horse riders don't work well in teams because it's obviously a solitary sport so what sort yes. of you know what sort of character traits do you need to work well in a team or what skills do you have to learn to work well in a team? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, working in teams in a hospital, you're working with um, people who are your peers, so who have the same level of training as you. You're working with people like, you know, we're working with vets, we're working with surgeons, we're working with students, you know. We need to be able to listen and to guide. Um, you know, I think not seeing your way as the only way is a big one. Um, you know, I think listening to people with more experience than yourself um, and also being with people that even if they have more experience, they may still listen to your opinion, um, you know, on a particular situation. And I think a bit of give and take is, um, is sort of what you need to, to make it really work. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, as you sort of go through your professional career, you tend to kind of come across people who you really admire, then um, and you sort of they become inspirational to you, I suppose, in a way, or they mentor you either officially or unofficially. Have you got anyone like that in your career? Yeah, um, so I've been really fortunate to have um, some really great mentors, both personally and professionally. So in my personal life, um, my dad was probably a key mentor. Um, he was a great horseman and my lifelong coach till he passed away two years ago. Um, so yeah, really big influence in my life. Um, as a competitive rider you know I look up to you know the top riders who not only perform well but the ones who have horse welfare as a priority and um, you know really focus on having a happy horse um, those are really people that I look up to uh, professionally I'm really lucky to be mentored by one of the specialist surgeons I work for um, Dr Sarah Jallum 
Uh, she is fantastic. Um, she's helped me with all my formal training um, and also keeping me accredited, you know, with my accreditation and my uh, registration that I have to work on every year. Um, she really pushes me and like doesn't settle for second best, you know. And I think if you've got someone in your life like that that just doesn't let you settle and always pushes you for that little bit more. So have you had any sort of experiences within your career that you could look back on now and say sort of changed your life or or places in your career where your life took a different path? Yeah, so um, there's been sort of a few moments in my career which, you know, I, prior to entering, I never thought would have happened. Um, you know, I won, won some awards while I was studying, um, never saw that coming. Um, <laughs> but last year, probably the biggest thing was um, my boss has actually sent me to um, Lexington in Kentucky um, to attend a vet tech conference. Um, and that was just amazing. You know, I got to see two of the best equine hospitals in America. Um, I got to network with some really experienced vet techs. Um, I got to see how they do things over there, you know, some procedures that we don't really get to see here so often. Um, you know, got to see sort of some things that we do the same and that we do different and, you know, just got to see so much that, you know, I never thought I would. Um, on my afternoon off from the conference, I went to the Kentucky Horse Park, which is a must for any competitive rider, I think. Um, got to see some hunter jumping, which we don't have here. Um, that was really cool. Got to see some show jumping. And there's so many other attractions there as well, you know, the National Horse Museum and um, a big off the track sort of program. But um, that was really fun. And uh, before I flew home, I actually went and spent a day in the surgical theatre um, at a hospital called Rudin Riddle Equine Hospital, which is known to be one of the best in the country. Um, I met the head vet tech while I was at the conference and said, hey, can I come hang out for the day? And she said, sure. So um, yeah, got to see how the best in the business do things. And yeah, it was just an amazing experience that, you know, nine years ago, even five years ago, I probably wouldn't have ever thought that that would be an option, but yeah, here it was and it was amazing. It does sound like an amazing experience. Um, you've been mentored and you're obviously in a position now where you probably also mentor younger vet nurses. How do you sort of coach them through difficult situations? Like, you know, the first time they maybe lose a horse on the job or, or, or something like that, yeah. or something goes really wrong. How, how do you mentor them through that? Yeah, that's definitely something that's really confronting um, when you start. It can be quite difficult to deal with. Um, I think, you know, everybody handles it a little bit differently um, but and you do have to find a way to deal with it. Um, compassion fatigue is a big issue in our industry um, so there's sort of a lot of awareness um, you know even with the general public and try to go a bit easier on us um, you know so we don't suffer that compassion fatigue and and you know suffer the mental problems that go along with that so it's really important that you find a way that works for you um, you know, there are different situations which you might lose a horse um, in a hospital environment. The first one is, um, you know, the humane euthanasia. So these are the older horses that whose times come, you know, they might be, um, you know, a, an emergency, uh, like a fatal injury. Um, it might be a sick inpatient that you've been caring for for a while. Um, you know, these are the cases that probably a little bit easy to take but you know they're not they're not ever easy um, but I think in those situations you know it's important that we don't judge the owner um, it's our job to make sure they're happy with their decision um, we support them and we carry out their wishes the the other scenario is the unexpected death so these are the ones that pass away under anesthesia um, Unfortunately, horses don't anaesthetize as well as dogs and cats do. Um, you know, they might pass away in recovery. Um, you know, they might be a compromised horse, like they've just had an emergency colic surgery, um, or they might be a, you know, a really healthy horse undergoing a fairly routine procedure. These ones are the ones that hit the staff really hard. You know, you can, um, basically, you can do everything by the book and things uh, still don't have the outcome that you'd like, you know, and that's hard to take. And, you know, often after those, um, the team will have a bit of a debrief and we'll talk about if there was anything we could do differently, um, you know, is there something that we could have done a bit better? You know, and I think the hard thing is that the answer isn't always that there was something we could do different, you know, like you can do it right and 
you know, still don't get the desired outcome. Yeah, okay. That sounds like a really good strategy. Um, so how do you manage your overall career sort of trajectory or your career growth? Like where do you see yourself going from here? Yeah. So like I'm really fortunate that I work in an environment that really supports and encourages um, professional development. So whether you're a vet, whether you're a nurse, they're always, you know, really pushing you to do some more study and really supporting you to do that. Um, it's just kind of the culture of the business that we all keep learning and growing, which I think is really important. Um, you know, with the nurses, um, we encourage them to be qualified if they're not already. Um, you know, they're our national governing body, the Vet Nurse Council of Australia, has just introduced a national registration scheme. Um, and that requires us to achieve 20 professional development points a year. So we can do that through conferences, through doing case studies, through watching webinars, um, a number of different things, doing presentations to your peers. Um, you know, so that's something that we're working on all the time. Um, there's also an accredited scheme, which is 30 points per year. So an additional 10, um, which is just trying to work on excellence um, in our profession. So basically um, just constantly learning and trying to improve yourself. You can pick things that are of interest to you. So I like doing a lot of case studies, you know, particularly on cases that I've had a lot of involvement in. So, um, you know, that's always a good one. Um, we have a national vet nurse conference every year, which is great for learning, for network. Um, there is a specifically equine vet nurse conference every two years. Um, you know, there's international conferences and COVID has actually been really great for professional development in our industry because all the conferences have gone online. So you can pretty much attend conferences all over the world from the company of your living room, you know, whenever you like. So it's really been ideal for us this year, actually. <laughs> That's great. We do have different uh, shifts at work. So we have different start times, different finish times um, to give cover, you know, through the day at the hospital. So sometimes I can fit in a ride before work. Sometimes it's after work. Um, for six months of the year, it's nearly always in the dark. So <laughs> got to do it under a light. But, um, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. If you don't make time for the things you want to do, you don't get to do them. So, yeah. Um, so just in, in summary, I mean, it seems to me that the general um, sort of trend in your life is hard work and dedication. So, but in summary, if people would like to pursue a career in vet nursing, so some of our pony club, younger pony club members that are looking at being vet nurses, what should they be doing now? You know, if they're, even if they're only 14, is there something they can do now? Yeah, like it can be a really difficult industry to get into. So I think you need to be persistent and proactive. Um, you know, if you're a student, get out there and do work experience. Um, most most states you can start work experience at about 15, 16. So, you know, if you are 14, you know, make yourself known to a clinic, you know, particularly if you're taking your horse in, um, say, look, I, I'm due to do work experience next week, year. You know, do you take students just Point yourself out that way. Um, don't underestimate the power of work experience. Um, you know, employers are always watching you to see who they want for the future. So if you can make a good impression there, um, I think you're ahead. Once you are in there, there's really a lot of directions that you can go um, and you can really sort of make a niche for yourself, which is something I didn't realise before I started. But yeah, there's so much you can do. Um, if you sort of want to get a look into what um, we do in an equine hospital, there's actually um, a TV series on ABC iView at the moment called Scottish Vets Down Under, which was filmed at our hospital. It was filmed for the BBC um, in the UK. So, you know, there's a strong emphasis on everything Australian, but it does give you an idea of sort of what we do on a daily basis and just gives you a bit of an inside look that you wouldn't normally see. So are you in the series? Yes, yes, oh. <laughs> yeah, tried, tried to stay in the background a little bit, but um, yeah, they do interview me a few times, which was definitely another experience I didn't thought I'd have yeah. being on a reality show, but hey. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, go you. Um, well, thank you so much, Claire, uh, for talking to us. That was just, that's been so interesting and so illuminating, and I hope um, all our uh, readers and listeners will, will enjoy that as much, meeting you as much as I have. Um, so thank you very much. and um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. Speak to you soon. Thank you.